What's up? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make spatial audio for free inside Pro Tools using Dolby Atmos Render Room. Now, in order to do the steps that I'm doing in this video, you'll need to turn back and watch my first video. Link will be in the description below, which explains how to install all the software you need for Dolby Atmos Render Room. This specific tutorial is going to be in Pro Tools, however, these concepts can be applied to other software. You can follow along in this first section and it will apply to the other DAWs. Once you have Dolby Atmos Render Room, you'll want to open it and when you open it, you'll see a screen similar to this. Now, the first thing you need to do is hit Command, Comma, or you can go up to the top and go to the Preferences window. And we'll need to configure a few settings here. What you want to do now is you'll want to plug in whatever audio interface or pair of headphones that you're going to be using to monitor the audio coming from Render Room. So let's go over the settings now. You want to have Core Audio selected. You want to select Dolby Audio Bridge from this list here as your output device. You'll want to use whatever headphones slash interface you plan to use. And for external sync source, you'll want to go to LTC. It's usually set to MTC by default, but you want to set it to LTC. Very important, you need to go to headphone only mode and check that, and I would do routing one through two. Okay, now, something to note about sample rate, you're probably going to want to work at 48K, and it's important. You can move on from here to the headphone tab over here. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to set it to binaural, okay? It's very important because this is what's going to allow you to basically uh, model you being in a Dolby Atmos room, okay? This window is a window I find myself often on because what you can do here is you can basically A, B between stereo and binaural audio, which will help you kind of get a feel for how this mix is going to translate. And then make sure that you hit accept down here. The render room actually isn't really used to control any of the objects. It is simply used for monitoring and visualizing your mix. It is also used for recording your mix. Up here, you have different things you can mute. For example, you can mute the objects, beds, or you can mute both of them. Next, you have basically a dim switch. You have a recording section up here, and this also is the enable sync button right here and what this does is it syncs the render room to your DAW which you will need in order to actually record. Next you'll have this object list over here. This whole purple section is your bed. The best way to describe a bed it's basically like your kind of stationary mix and then you have your objects and your objects are basically the individual instruments that you can turn into objects and have them uh, be panned around super easily, position them super easy. This will make much more sense once you see an example. It's important to note though that with Pro Tools you're only going to get a finite number of objects that you can use unless you're using Pro Tools Ultimate. Next you have a simulation right here of all the different speakers so you can mute, say you want to mute the center channel, left channel, right channel. So that will kind of, so if you're mixing for say 5.1 instead of 7.1 or maybe a setup that has even more speakers you can kind of simulate what that mix is going to translate like by muting different speakers right here and then you have this view right here there's a theater view if you're working on films and there's a person view i just keep it on person view you can also number objects which can be really helpful and when in organizing things but that's basically all i really do so once you open up Pro Tools, you'll want to first create a project and you need to follow these pretty specific settings. So the first thing you need to do is you want to check create from template and you'll want to go and click on one of the Dolby Atmos production suite folders and you'll want to choose the Dolby Atmos renderer, Dolby audio bridge, stereo template right here. Make sure your sample rate is 48K and you'll want to create that. So one thing to note that it's telling me right here is that you can't put objects in the bed. This version of Pro Tools doesn't actually 
support 7.1.2 channels unfortunately so you can only really use objects however this shouldn't be much of a problem considering object based mixing is most of what you're doing once you open your template you'll see a bunch of different audio tracks which are routed to different objects so first thing i want to do is go to playback engine then hit w audio bridge make sure that's select i'll reload here you want to go to io and then you'll want to import settings make sure that in the IO settings folder, you should find something that says Dolby Atmos Renderer, Dolby Audio Bridge Stereo.pio. Make sure it's a stereo one. And you want to open this and import this vision. Boom, press OK. The first thing I'm going to do is actually delete a lot of these unnecessary objects that we don't need. Since the normal version of Pro Tools only has a finite number of outputs, there's only so many objects we can create. And anything past object 31 32 won't work the next thing you want to do is import your audio tracks now that you've imported your stems you can go and delete all the extra objects that you do not need just go ahead and delete all these other objects now we have our stems here and it's time to actually route these as objects so the first thing you want to do is go to output and you'll want to assign mono audio tracks to mono objects and stereo audio tracks to stereo objects so I'm just going to go ahead and start patching this stuff. I'm going to do object 11 for the kick drum. There's another kick mic, so I'm going to do 12. Okay, so we have everything routed, but there's one additional step we need to do. You know the music panner I made you install? Well, you need to actually have that on every single channel because that is what's going to allow you to control the Dolby Atmos render room. So now you want to find the, so, so now you'll want to find the Dolby Atmos music panner. And it pops up right here, choose mono. I'm just gonna hold option and copy this to every track. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to make a new aux track. Doesn't matter what the name is, but you want to pull up the LTC, WLTC generator plugin. Then you want to assign this to you want to assign this to 129, which is, says LTC 129 right here. So you want to assign that. This is going to allow Dolby Atmos Render Room to sync up with your project. Now we have to do an additional layer of patching. So we have to patch the panner in. So this should match this right here. So OK, now we have everything patched. So the first thing I'm going to do is a test run. And I'm going to hit play. And you should hear the audio coming through once you have all this set up and as you can see I have render room open and all these objects are lighting up indicating that there is signal passing through the render room and you'll be able to see a 3d representation of the objects right here so so I'm gonna show you guys so you guys won't be able to hear the audio cuz it's at most audio it's not in stereo I could sum it to stereo but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to show you guys a few basic things about how this works so you'll have this so this is the Dolby Atmos music panner okay now you have a few controls you have X Y Z X you move it like this Y you can move it back and forth and Z is your height so if the object is really big like this then it's at the ceiling and if it's really small like that then it's on the floor and this corresponds to render room you can see it right there so if we wanted to make it higher we can crank that Z up and you'll see that it's above our heads you can also go here and visually interact with it and drag it around another thing that's very important is the size the size is actually how much the object bleeds into other speakers and how big and how loud it is and how prominent it is so I like making my kicks pretty big so this size is going to kind of allow this thing to bleed into much more areas and make it seem like it is surrounding you more than just having it say be in like the back left channel you'll see size is represented by this big halo right here so I'm going to be making some more in-depth tutorials about the panel later but right now what I encourage you to do is to experiment start mixing with this stuff and get a feel for it. It's really fascinating. It's really great. And yes, it makes a huge difference. And you'll find yourself, you'll find that you'll have much more room to position, pan, 
and play with objects. You'll, you'll find that you'll be EQing stuff less because you have more space to put objects in the mix. You can do tons of crazy cool tricks and all that stuff. So stay tuned to my channel for more tutorials and content about Dolby Atmos and mixing for spatial audio. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Bye.